The next class of methods for solving linear systems, interestingly enough, leverages how we solve optimization problems or minimization problems. Let's remember how this goes. If you have some function of x that is a some function, it's differentiable, then first of all, to make clear that this is a function of only one variable, let's make this f of chi. And what we learned in calculus was that this function attains its minimum or maximum or is at a critical point when its derivative is equal to zero. Okay? Now, if we pick that function carefully, in particular, if we pick this function to be the function one half times alpha times chi squared minus beta times chi, where alpha, chi, and beta are all scalars, then if we differentiate this, what we get is that its derivative is equal to alpha times chi minus beta. And if we then set that equal to zero to find out where the critical points are, what we find is that alpha times chi is equal to beta. And then we remember that if alpha is positive, then this uh, second degree polynomial is concave upwards, and therefore we know that we're at a minimum there. And finally, if we consider alpha to be a one by one matrix, chi to be a vector of size one and beta to be a vector of size one, then we recognize this as solving a times x equals b for the vector x. Now, we could, of course, start backwards. If we wanted to solve alpha chi equals beta, then we can construct the second degree polynomial that has the property that its minimum is at the point, at the value of chi, where alpha times chi is equal to beta. So now let's see how we can use that to solve linear systems. Our purpose is to solve AX is equal to B, where A is a matrix, X is a vector, and B is a vector. In our discussion, A is going to be a square matrix. As a matter of fact, for most of this week, we're simply going to take A to be a symmetric positive definite matrix, and Y will become clear in just a second. Now, if we create the function f of x is equal to 1 half times x transpose ax minus x transpose b, where another thing we're going to do this week is we're just going to say, let's just forget about complex valued matrices and vectors, and let's just stay in the, uh, examine the case where everything is real. So now we can just use transpose instead of Hermitian transpose. If you do the equivalent of differentiating this, what you end up with is that the gradient of f valued, evaluated at x is equal to zero. Okay? The gradient is actually the direction in which the function increases most rapidly at that point, okay. which means that its negative is the direction where it decreases most rapidly. Okay, we want to go in the direction where it decreases because we want to go towards where the value of the function is less. So we're going to be interested in what are known as descent methods, directions of descent. Okay, if we compute the gradient of this, well, this course doesn't have multivariate calculus as a prerequisite, so therefore we're just going to give it to you. The gradient of this particular function is given by ax minus b. And lo and behold, if you set that equal to zero, then you get exactly back what we wanted to solve in the first place, ax equals b. 
And just like over here, alpha had to be positive for it to be concave up. The matrix A has to be positive definite for this to be the equivalent of that in multiple dimensions. Okay. So this is sort of like a paraboloid in multiple directions, yeah. multiple dimensions. Now, in proving that the minimum of this function solves this under those circumstances, we actually don't use calculus. We simply use it by manipulating the linear algebra of what's involved. But this is the high level idea of where the ideas come from when you approach the problem from an optimization or a minimization point of view.